Boise, Idaho, get ready. You are about to receive some migrants of a very special nature, a nature that defies description. You are about to receive into your community the filthiest people alive. John Waters' Pink Flamingos was the first high-profit midnight movie. Costing only $12,000 borrowed from his father, it played extended runs of one to two years in most major cities, grossing over $5 million and grossing out most of his audiences. So many little waggies, and I'm still starving. And I'm going to eat them all before I go to sleepy. Oh, <laughs> I've made a career of offending liberals because conservatives don't come to my movies. Liberals are the easiest people in the world to offend because they think everything's right as long as it's not in their life. I want people to laugh, too. I used to be a puppeteer when I was about 12 years old for kids' birthday parties, but I started putting fake blood in it, and the parents stopped hiring me, so I had to move on to something, you know? And I was always a movie fan, but I always liked the trashy movies. And so what I ended up doing is make trashy movies for arty theaters. So that's what I want to do, is, is satirize everything that's terrible about entertainment, because I don't want, I love everything that's bad with America, and that's what I make movies about. I don't want to change anything. John Waters and many of his usual stars, like Divine and Mink Stoll, grew up together near downtown Baltimore, Maryland. I think John takes from the lives of the people that he knows, and takes from the personalities of the people that he knows that he writes for. But I don't think until Pink Flamingos, any of us took it really seriously. When I was a kid, I always wanted to be a movie star. That was, and, uh, but I thought, oh, as I got older, who's got a chance? I lived in Baltimore, Maryland. You know, How can I ever be a movie star? I live in Baltimore, Maryland. I thought, you, you had to go to New York or Hollywood. I, mean, I used to see Divine. I didn't know Divine until we were about 16, but we lived in the same neighborhood. He lived up the street. And my father used to drive me to school every morning. We'd see Divine was going through his color chart period, had different color hair every day. And my father would just look at him and shudder. And I thought, how great that somebody can make my father shudder by doing nothing but standing on the corner. Divine's on-screen character has gone through many changes. In Multiple Maniacs, Divine is raped by a 15-foot lobster. In Pink Flamingos, she's the queen of sleeves. In Female Trouble, she's got problems living at home. And in her most recent film, Polyester, which co-stars Tab Hunter, Divine is the abused, unloved housewife of suburban America. Elmer, let's try and have a pleasant family dinner. Let's try and be kind to the other members of the family. I'll try, Francine, but don't go riling me up. Choose your words with care, and I won't get riled. Yes, dear. Oh, Lulu, your hair looks so pretty. I know. Dexter, did you do your homework, honey? Sure, sure. Can we say grace? Can we at least do that? Bless all our knees and gifts which we are about to receive from the light body through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't answer it. I think I look real good when I, when, I, when it's all done. You know, I think if you're going to be a 300-pound woman, it might as well look like that as opposed to an old gray-haired hag in a polka dot dress, you know, that, that thinks that a big moo-moo is going to cover all that fat up because it doesn't, you know. So you might as well exploit it, you know, and make it work for you. See, Divine and I both always loved Jane Mansfield, and we wanted to get close to that because Jane Mansfield is really my all-time favorite movie star. I know Divine's is Liz Taylor. So maybe it's the two of them put together an exaggeration of it. If I do a tour, if we do a movie, when I go home, I hang it up. And I shut that door, and that, that part of Divine stays in the closet until it's time to work again. When they see my name or Divine's name and they come to our films, they expect something, and I try to deliver what my audience wants, which is to be outraged but to laugh at the same time. I'm trying to get you to laugh at things that you might be anxious about or be nervous about. And people say my films are sick, but I think that's healthy if you can laugh at something that you feel neurotic about. 